How dangerous is a slingshot that shoots 50mm steel balls? A while ago, I built a mechanical slingshot in my garage capable of shooting huge steel balls pretty fast. It took me four months of not knowing what I was doing, filled with doubts and fails, and I could have bought a used car for the money spent on the parts, but I somehow ended up with a functioning winch-powered slingshot made of aluminum and stainless steel that generates about 34 times more energy than a normal one. Now the plan is to test it against a bunch of different targets that get progressively tougher and see what this thing is capable of. Then, since the first version wasn't powerful enough, For this test, I'm making a few improvements that should heavily increase the power and the functionality of the slingshot. So far, I've been able to reach 340 joules with a 35mm steel ball. Energy is kinda hard to visualize though, so to give you a better reference, imagine dropping this anvil from chest high onto your shin. That is about 350 joules. Now, imagine dropping the same anvil from the second floor of a building. That's about 1000 joules, and that is the kind of energy I'm aiming for. To get there, I either need to increase the speed of the projectiles or their mass. And in this case, I probably need to do both. So this time, instead of using a 35mm steel ball, I'm gonna use a 50mm steel ball. This one is three times heavier than the old one, which means if I shot them at the same speed, I will get three times the energy. The only problem is that my old clamps, which hold and release the steel balls when I shoot, have just enough space for a 35mm ball. So I built bigger ones. These have enough space to hold 40mm and 50mm steel balls as well. Fun fact that I find absolutely insane. The 50mm steel ball is 244 times heavier than a normal slingshot ammo. That's like comparing this much chocolate to a bowling ball. In the previous video, I also noticed the bands were slowing down when passing through the fork, probably because of the limited space available. Moreover, the 35mm ball actually scraped the bottom of the fork a few times. So, to avoid that, I made a much larger and taller fork. This is how it looks compared to the old one, and this is how it looks compared to a normal slingshot. I also made much thicker front plates, the ones that hold the elastic bands, because the previous ones were actually bending a little bit. Now, the second way to increase the energy is increasing the speed of the projectiles. And to do so, first, I'm increasing the draw length. The longer the draw length, the longer the bands will push the balls and the higher the speed of the projectiles. And since the option of keeping this thing handheld is kinda out of the window, I'm installing a much longer frame. This thing is massive which also has thicker walls compared to the previous one. Just to be 100% sure this thing doesn't fold in half on my head. While the second method I can use to try to increase the speed is all about modifying the elastic bands and the pouch. In the first version of my slingshot, I had 16 bands per side. And even though they look cool and scary, the problem is that when you shoot, all those layers rub against each other, slowing down quite a lot. And so I had no idea how to fix the problem. But then Jorg, from the Slingshot channel gave me a nice tip that should definitely work. Instead of using all those layers per side with a limited width, I can just use the entire width of an elastic band roll and simply fold it in half. This way, instead of having 16 individual layers per side, I'm gonna just have three. It should work better and they're definitely much faster to make. Then to further reduce the friction between the layers, I'm gonna use baby powder and just pour it all over the bands. I'm also using a lighter pouch, which is a firefighter hose section, instead of two layers of leather, and I'm gonna connect the bands to it using looped Dyneema ropes. So with these modifications, the slingshot is definitely gonna be more powerful, but I also gotta make sure I can actually use it. Because in the first version, the band's pull was so intense that made it impossible to pull the trigger using two fingers, even after installing roller bearings on the clamps. So now, I built a huge trigger lever, you probably get it at this point, I'm trying to fix all the issues by making stuff bigger. <laughs> Hope it works. A longer lever is gonna give me a much better mechanical advantage. I'm also gonna use much bigger roller bearings that hopefully will keep working under the pressure. I can't be 100% sure though, so I'm gonna bring the hammer just in case. Anyways, now I can finally assemble everything. I'm mounting the new trigger, the new clamps, and the new fork. And now, here's how it looks. All right then, 
let's test it. To stop the projectiles as a sort of cash box, I was planning to use a safe with sand inside of it, but I lost the keys of the safe. I realized that this morning. So I guess I'm gonna use earth. First of all though, I gotta find out if with the no modifications, the slingshot, well, if it works and if it's actually performing better than the previous version. So to find out for the first part of the test, I'm gonna shoot two times with two different steel balls. And obviously I'm gonna measure the velocity and the energy for each one of those shots. So I poured a lot of baby powder all over the bands to reduce the friction. I feel like a cartel member or something. <laughs> Anyways, now I'm ready for the test. This time I'm using a very powerful drill to crank the winch. And even though it's kinda hard to hold, it's successfully pulling the elastic band. Well, this is a great start. For some reason, all the bands on the right side broke in half. Anyways, I have no idea why this happened. These bands should be able to take a 5.5x stretch, and I was probably at 4.5x, so not really sure about it. But then I watched the footage back, and I noticed something. All right, I got it. So it basically all started from the bands slipping out of the fork. And then I don't know what happened, the, the energy, the bands broke, I have no idea why, but. So I'm gonna make new bands and I'm gonna use sandpaper on the front plates so that they shouldn't slip anymore. <laughs> First time I decide to not use the shield, I got slapped in the face. So I'm using the shield from now. Anyways, I'm trying again. And it happened the same exact thing. The bands slipped out of the right side of the fork. And at first they went through a few seconds of desolation, but this actually allowed me to find the real issue. The problem has always been this screw right here. It's damaged and it wasn't properly tightening the bands on the right side of the fork. So I fixed the problem by making two holes and using balls for the bottom screw. So now it should definitely work. So I didn't even shoot once and I already went through six full rolls of elastic bands and uh, almost died. Maybe I'm being a little bit dramatic, but the slingshot shot backwards. But now I also know why the bands kept snapping. It was this knot. It was punching a hole through the bands. So I installed the only elastic bands I have left and I moved the knot away so it doesn't touch them. But obviously it's just a theory. So now the only thing left to do is to see if it actually works. Yes! Yes, it worked! Yes, it worked! All right, the chronograph didn't even read the speed. In any case, I'm gonna move on to the 50 millimeter ball. <laughs> that's, gonna be, that's gonna be insane. Forty-four point four meters per second, ladies and gentlemen. That was five hundred joules. <laughs> that's that's insane. It's it's not really the thousand joules that I was aiming for, but these bands are not the best. I'll take it though. Anyways, I'm moving on to the next target: soda bottles. This 
time I could stretch the bands almost all the way through, and thanks to that, I got a higher speed than before. 49.1 meters per second. And that little improvement in speed gives 630 joules of energy. That's almost twice the energy of the first version of the slingshot. And I'm very curious to see what this thing will do to a ballistic dummy. Unfortunately though, right before taking the next shots, the bands randomly snapped. And so, for the next targets, I'm gonna get better ones. I just placed the order and they're gonna be here in two days. And so in the meantime, I wanna give a massive shout out to the people who entirely backed this project and made it possible. And that's the guys at Odoo. Odoo is a software that helps people manage their businesses. It offers various apps that make daily tasks easier. The first app you choose is free forever, including hosting and support. And then if you pick more apps, you're gonna switch to a paid plan. You know, one of the things I would really love to make in my life, before getting smashed by a slingshot ball, is making a cool product. And when the time comes, I surely need a website as well. Luckily, Odoo even has a website builder app, which allows you to make fully functional, professional websites in four simple steps. Define your goals, choose a color palette, or drop in your logo and let the AI do the matching, add your pages and features, and pick a theme. Then you can customize everything with drag and drop blocks, text, images, videos, even animations, fonts, colors. It's like building a slingshot with different components, but with HTML. And yes, there is AI as well. It helps you generate, rewrite, translate all your content on the fly. It's like having a an actual copywriter. I use Odoo to stay on top of my video production schedule, and when the time comes, I'm gonna use it to build a website that doesn't look like it came out of 2024. I'm leaving a link in the description so you can try Odoo for yourself. Moreover, your first step is free for life, so give it a try. All right, I just installed the new elastic bands, and so let's keep going with the targets. The next one is a beer keg. Now, the steel boss have an insane momentum, but basically no penetration power, and so I have no idea if they're gonna just push the keg or actually blew it up. Let's find out. And well, it definitely punched through it. Anyways, I got two targets left before getting to the ballistic dummies, but the next one is gonna be very tough already, because it's not one, not two, but three pine boards. I basically wanna see where the ball is gonna stop. I feel like it's definitely gonna stop, but I just wanna know where. That's right. I definitely wasn't expecting that. Let me show you the aftermath. So every board is split. Oh, the ball is just here. So they almost stopped it, but not quite. And here's the shot at normal speed. All right, the next target is actually impossible for this slingshot. And it's a big, thick panel of bulletproof glass. Now, I don't think it's gonna go through this one, but I'm very curious to see what's gonna happen. I feel like the ball is probably gonna bounce back with this one. So I'm shooting at it at an angle and hopefully it doesn't hit me. And I was expecting basically every scenario for this one, besides right. the one that actually happened. No way went through. There, there is no way. I'm gonna give you the specs of this bulletproof glass, but I was 100% sure it wasn't, gonna, it wasn't gonna go through it. Look how thick this thing is. There is polycarbonate inside of it. The same thing I'm using for my shield. All right. Well, 
Let's see what happens to the ballistic dummies. This right here is the moment I've been waiting for. So I'm gonna shoot two times, one on the side of the head and one in the front. And after the first shot, I thought I hit too low and the ball just bounced off the jaw of the dummy. But this slow motion shot revealed a different story. The steel ball punched through the jaw and all the gelatin inside the dummy, showing once again a much higher penetration power than what I was expecting. Oh yeah, I see it now. It came out of here. All right, let's shoot again a little bit higher. And here I am. Two years ago I was wondering how dangerous slingshot were, and now I think I can finally answer the question. I would say it really depends on the slingshot. This project has been hard and it took a long time to make, but now I've got a bunch of cool ones coming out before the end of the year. So if you like this video and you want to see those, subscribe. Also, leave a like. It would mean a lot because this way I know you enjoy this stuff. Thank you for watching.